All right, let's say that we have a ball being dropped from a height of three meters, and we're asked to solve for the velocity of the ball right before it hits the ground. To begin, I will complete my LOL diagram, and the first thing I'll do is ask myself um, at position A, and let's say that position A is right after you've dropped the ball. So like it's just left your hand, but it's pretty much still at that height of three meters. It hasn't really started moving yet. It's just about to fall. So uh, what would the forms of energy be that the ball has at that position, right? Does it have kinetic energy? Well, no, not really. It's not really moving quite yet. Does it have gravitational potential energy? Well, if we say that the floor or the ground is, is zero, then yes, this object is three meters above the ground. So why don't we just go ahead and draw in three chunks of potential, if you will. So I'll just go ahead and show that one here, two, we have three, three blocks of gravitational potential energy. Okay. Now I'll keep going. I just do this from left to right. I'll ask myself, are there any, um, first of all, before I ask myself about work being done, what is the system? It's very important that we consider this right now. Well, I'm going to count the ball for sure. And then there's one more object that you need to include. Can you think of what that is? Right. This might not be very intuitive, but remember gravitational potential energy is not stored in objects. It's stored in the gravitational field between the object and the earth. What that means is if we don't include the earth in our system, then we don't have gravitational potential energy. Then gravity is an outside force doing work on our system. So what we'll say here is we'll also include the earth in our system. That allows us to account for something called gravitational potential energy. And then we'll say there's no work being done, right? There are no external forces acting on the ball. Um, and I know this because I know there are no, uh, there's no air resistance. We're not going to consider that for this problem. And again, the earth is in our system because that gravitational potential energy is stored between the object and the earth's gravitational field. So then finally, does the ball have kinetic energy right before it hits the ground? Of course it does, right? It's moving very fast. Um, and so that means it has now kinetic energy. Before I'll draw in the bar for kinetic, I'll ask myself while I'm doing this, does the ball have gravitational potential energy right when it hits the ground? Right. We're going to say no, it doesn't. Um, any small height is negligible there. So essentially the ball is on the ground. So I'm just going to cross this out to indicate that I've thought about that. I'm also going to go back to the beginning and cross out the kinetic to indicate that I have considered the kinetic and I have determined it to be zero. Now, is there any thermal energy? Well, no, we've ignored friction and air resistance. And even if we didn't, the air is not part of our system. And so any energy that it would have gained is not going to be accounted for in this type of energy. So we're going to cross out. There's no thermal energy being generated here. So now that I know there's only one form of energy at the end and there was no work done, I know that all three bars here, right? So all three bars of this potential had to become kinetic, if you will. And so I'll just show this here as one two, three, right? I didn't gain any energy. I didn't lose any energy and there's nowhere else for the energy to have gone. So I know I must have the same amount of kinetic and potential um, or kinetic at the bottom as I had potential at the top. So now this is the most important part. I can write out my equation. So my energy conservation equation would look like this. I go to my initial state or position A and I take all the energies that I had. So I say my UG, my gravitational potential energy at position A, right? Plus or minus, well, there is no work to be done, right? There's no positive or negative work here. So I'm going to skip that term as well. Will be equal to, and, and at the end, I only have kinetic. So I'll say that the kinetic at position B. That's it, right? All of the gravitational potential energy at position A has become kinetic energy by position B or right at the ground. And so what that means is they're equal to each other. And then it becomes very straightforward to solve. If I continue then this equation, I can actually expand what UGA is, right? So UGA is nothing more than mass of the of the ball multiplied by G, right? Multiplied by, we'll say that's YA, the Y position of A, right? And then that would be equal to what's kinetic energy? It's one half times the mass, same mass, times the velocity at point B squared, 
So it's important to denote the subscript for the y position and for the velocity because those change, right? But m and g are constants in this example, so you don't need to put a subscript there because they don't change. Uh, interesting to note here, mass is on both sides of the equation. So what that means is we can cancel out the mass, or we can divide both sides by m, and they'll go away. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And then that simplifies to g, our gravitational field strength, multiplied by the position of the ball, the, y, the height of the ball, really, if you say at, at a at the beginning, is one-half the velocity of the ball at point b squared. So if I'm looking for, I'm solving for vb, right? So solve for vb, that's the velocity of the ball at position b, which we're calling the ground. So that would be, I can multiply right here by 2 on both sides. That's going to be my algebra step there. And that will be, uh, the 1 half will cancel. And so I'll get 2g times y a is equal to v b squared. And then how do I get rid of a square on both sides? I'm going to have to do the square root of both sides. And if I do that, then that means that the square root of 2 times g times the position of the ball, height of the ball at a, is equal to vb, right? And that's it. That's all I have to do. So I can plug in my values here. That's going to be the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 3 meters, which was our, our y height. And that will be equal to about 7.7 .7 meters per second. All right, so what we've just done is we've solved for the velocity of the ball the moment it hits the ground only using energy. Right? This is something that before we would have had to use kinematics for. Right, We would have had to use a kinematic equation to solve for the velocity of the ball right before it hits the ground using the acceleration due to gravity, and our delta y here would be 3 meters. And so this gives us a new way to solve problems that we've uh, you know, done before in, in different ways. Let's take a look at another example that involves work.